Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to The Everyday Investor, the hottest investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. This show is designed to help us all grow our money. You see, the challenge is often that we take our precious time, we go to work, which is a blessing, we get a paycheck in order to eat. We take our time, we go to work, we get paid so we can provide. But imagine a life where you could have money make you money, work a little less if you wanted to, and then take that time, spend it with family, friends, engage in a, a purpose greater than yourself. That is what the Everyday Investor TV show is all about. Remember, whenever you're faced with any type of investment opportunity, you always want to ask four questions to start. Number one, what is the return on investment? What is the ROI? Two, when do I get that return along with the money that I put in? Three, what is the minimum investment amount needed? And four, you look them right in the eyes and you ask them what is the worst case scenario? What is the downside? Super excited about uh, this show today. We're talking to our friends, Francois and Jennifer, and they're gonna teach us how we can make money investing outside of this province. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. It's all about the tenant laws. So in Ontario, they're very much skewed towards the tenants' uh, rights, so they're favored. Uh, in other provinces, tenants may have fewer rights, but it creates an opportunity as well for the investor, but also for the tenant-landlord relationship. It's much healthier. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. Before we talk to Francois and Jennifer, learning how we can make money outside of province, let's find out what's happening in the world of stocks. Thanks, Rob. Omar Khan here, guys, with Data Trading Weekly Market Update. Now, the markets pulled back a little bit last week because of this nasty word that keeps coming up, inflation. I'm sure you've seen it in the grocery stores, uh, out and about. You're probably seeing prices go up. Now, inflation is not the best thing when it comes to the market. Stock market gets a bit worried because future expected growth could be expected to be lower because central banks would have to raise their rates. Now, I don't want to get too much into what that means. Basically, the fear is interest rates could go up, therefore slowing down economic activity. What's happening right now, though, is that corporate earnings, the amount of money companies are making, are still coming in very strong. So the market keeps pushing all-time highs. Now, that will continue, but we're going to have to keep an eye on this nasty thing called inflation and to see if corporate earnings keep coming in. So far, so good. Uh, and we're about to enter the good part of the year statistically with November and December, which is supposed to be a really good time of the year for the stock market. So let's see what happens. Okay, Francois and Jennifer, nice to have you guys on the show. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, so you guys are, um, I mean, you, you invest everywhere, but you also um, are investing remotely, if you will. And that's right here in Canada? Yes, so we live in Ottawa, so fairly, well, sort of central. And we invest in uh, New Brunswick and Alberta very shortly, as well as in the States. But our main focus is Canada for now. So how does that work? So do you, do you actually go there and are you hands-on there? Or are you going there once or twice, setting up your team? Explain kind of the process. Well, I think we like to go as little as possible, <laughs> but uh, we definitely do have to set up teams where, wherever we invest. That's a really important part. So we have gone and, and done whatever we've, we've had to do um, to make the, the team uh, grow. And grow. that's it. And, and a lot of it came through networking, a mm -hmm. group such as the Right Club, we built our network. And now we have staff. Um, a good example is Moncton, New Brunswick. So we have some staff there. We can just call on them. I was just organizing the uh, the snow removal services this morning. So everything is doable. It's the same as owning locally in Ottawa, where we are. We still have to get snow removal. Uh, if a toilet breaks, I'm not handy, so I'm not replacing it. So same concept in New Brunswick. Uh, you send someone out, a plumber or a handyman that you have on your team. 
And and why not in your own backyard and why in, you know, out east? Is it just, is it purely numbers, returns? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, huge difference. If number one, and I know Sarah is on this show sometimes, Sarah Larby, but it's all about the tenant laws. So in Ontario, they're very much skewed towards the tenants' uh, rights, so they're favored. Uh, in other provinces, tenants may have fewer rights, but it creates an opportunity as well for the investor, but also for the tenant-landlord relationship. It's much healthier, I find, so that's a huge opportunity. Yes. And you're saying you're finding in Ontario, it might not always be win-win. It's maybe more more favor to the tenant as opposed to, um, and, and so out east, it's a win-win relationship. That's what you're saying? Yes, exactly. I find that um, in the east, you can kind of talk with, with tenants and say, hey, we're going to fix up a few things, but that costs money, so we need to increase rent a little bit. And you can just have that conversation, whereas you can't have that in Ontario. Yes, it's really a relationship. What do they need? What do we need? Of course, this is a business, so we need profit. They need a place that's fixed. There you go. Problem solved. And, um, you know, I don't often have um, two people together on the show. Um, <laughs> I'll ask uh, Jennifer, how is it working with your, uh, with your husband, um, you know, in a business like this? Is it, is it fun? Is it uh, two minds are better than one? Or can it be a little chaotic if you have kind of different visions that, you know, talk to us um, when, you know, there's many, many couples out there and uh, often one party doesn't want to have anything to do with the other. Um, <laughs> rarely, rarely do I see, you know, uh, husband and wife together um, investing. So I think it's pretty cool. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, Frost and I have always wanted to work together. So that was kind of like a, a bit of a dream come true. We've been together since we're 18 year old years old so it's uh 23 years <laughs> kind of kind of came naturally but um we do kind of complement each other whereas we always say france is kind of the gas and, and i'm the break so he's always de developing all kinds of ideas and let's do let's go here let's go there and then i'm the kind of the person who'll say okay well what's the roi what are we going to get out of it is this a good idea what's the exit strategy so we kind of complement each other in that way no, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I can't wait to look at some of these numbers. So um, you're, you're, are we going to look at one of your latest properties? And, and you said in New Brunswick, is that where it, where it is? Yeah. yeah, Moncton, New Brunswick. And this example we thought we'd share with you and your audience is actually a, a deal gone bad. So a, a deal <laughs> what gone not bad. to do? Yeah, mm -hmm. what not to do and how we made it turn into something better. So. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Exactly. Good, good, good. Because th this is a show to inspire people I to know. invest. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's also a show that wants to be fully transparent. And so, uh, yeah. yeah, so let's let's take a look a little bit. Uh, we won't get through it all. We'll take a break in between. But um, talk to me a little bit. So this is in Moncton, right? Here we go. And what type of property is it? A sixplex. It's a sixplex, so six units. And so how did this work? Did you go there? I mean, are you, are you uh, at, a, at a place where you feel comfortable to buy properties um, sight unseen if you have your realtors in place and so on and so forth? Yeah, that's, that's what happens. So we send someone in to do a video tour, maybe drones if needed to see the outside. And then we make an offer when we're happy. Then we send in an inspector and we get the inspector report. And so yeah, that's the most properties we never see. So this property you didn't see, that's incredible. And when, so when did we purchase this? May of this year, May, 2021. Okay, so this is May 21. And you um, have a realtor there. Do you just have one? Do you have two or three? Um, we have three. You have three. Keep them hard, to keep them, uh, keep them hard working, huh? That exactly. It's better to some, some have specialties as well. Like there's one, he deals more in private deals off market. Uh, so that's it. It's good to have a variety of people on your team. And then with your um, mortgage specialist, with your lawyer, um, is that the ones that you always use because they can kind of practice anywhere? Or do you need uh, one in that province, uh, a lawyer, mortgage broker? Well, for mortgage brokers, a lot of them can do like all the provinces. One that we work with does. Um, lawyers, though, it really is better to have somebody local. Yeah, they know the local yeah. 
quirks and quirks. <laughs> and then how does the um, home inspection work on this? Obviously, you're not there. You have somebody that uh, that you rely on to to inspect the property. Yeah. So like our, I mentioned, now we have staff in Moncton. So we've sent some of our staff to do a video tour while the home inspector is there. It feels just like you're live and and we know what to look for after uh, so many properties, you know what you should keep an eye on. And So as people are watching and they want to be Francois and Jennifer's uh, one day, um, when you say staff, that can sound overwhelming. I mean, is this a full-time yeah. salary staff or is it is it, you know, by the hour, by the job kind of thing? That's it. So we can't afford a full-time staff. So you have to get creative. Um, I found a lot of people are looking for part-time work or commission. So we have uh, people there that are paid per duty. So sometimes it's by hour and some things like if it's a lease signing, there's bonuses and commissions. So they okay. love it. So okay. that's it. Great. So what was the purchase price on this? So 450000 450000 And again, how did you know if this was, you know, fair market, above, below? Is it your realtor again sending you comps? And, you know, um, obviously you're not there, so you want to be prudent uh, with that. How, how did you feel like this was a good purchase price? Well, at this point, we had already had a few purchases under our belt in Moncton, so we had a really good idea of what the price per door is. Um, so we were confident that it was a good price. So if, so on your first one, Jennifer, what would you have done? What did you do? Or were you there for your first one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we relied on on agents and comps. Okay, agents and yeah. comps. Okay, very important. So, so now, what is, um, you know, because you said it wasn't necessarily the way that you planned it, but it still worked out because, you know, when we're a pilot in a project, we're going to hit turbulence. And, and then of course we just got to navigate that. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, most things in, in real estate don't always happen in investing and in the stock market uh, doesn't, doesn't happen the way you plan, but as long as we're uh, can navigate. So what was the initial plan with this, with this sixplex when you bought it, was it fully tenanted? Did it need a lot of work? Tell me about the property a little bit. And, yeah, so and, your, and your plan. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, it's an old property, uh, late, well, late 60s, not very renovated. Uh, and it was fully tenanted, but with uh, like a bad selection of tenants, just the previous owner did not do any screening, nothing. And it was just whatever, orange shag carpet in the halls and uh, old windows, so it needed lots of work. 450 was a good price, um, and our goal was to renovate, fix it, and do the burst strategy in essence. So buy it, renovate it, uh, re-rent, so increase the, the rents, and then refinance. Everything was set up for that, uh, but there is one little detail that we missed. <laughs> so the roof, uh, six units, it came with a flat roof, and the flat roof is really, well, was shot. And that's about $35,000 in Moncton because labor and the pandemic has made things a lot more pricey. So uh, those things did not, didn't really work for the burr. So what we did, we pivoted. That's why I wanted to share the story is we turned it into a flip. So the property is now sold. Uh, we're signing in a few days for the, the closing. And, um, how we did, we changed the carpet, increased rents, left the bad roof. <laughs> Sorry for the buyer, but the bad roof is still there. And uh, we sold it for 600000 No, oh, that's fantastic. So, so let me back up for a second. So originally, you were going to buy it, um, renovate it, and renovate. Were you going to put some lipstick into it? Or were you going to do a major uh, renovation? No more lipstick because it... It's still good square rooms. Uh, the flooring wasn't bad in most of the units. It was more just d dated and ch yeah, change a bit of flooring, uh, appliances, lighting, okay. just freshen it up and the hallways. So for those that are not familiar, for those of you not familiar with the Burr strategy, it doesn't mean that we're cold. Uh, it could be, <laughs> could be out east, but they bought it, they renovate it, um, then they uh, rent it out um, or re-rent it out, refinance, and then you can repeat and keep going. Um, so that was your original plan. You were going to hold this. So when your home inspection did what they did, um, how, why did we miss out on the roof part? Yeah, so what happens, this deal was supposed to be a much bigger deal. We were buying two of units, two six flexes at once. 
One ended up with a, um, an oil tank. We didn't want to get involved. You need environmental assessments and all that fun stuff. This one did not have an oil tank, so it seemed much better. But instead of sending an inspector, we sent our contractor, and he didn't go on the roof. So, Got it. Got it. yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. I mean, we thought, let's hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. And we had multiple strategies for the building, like some short-term rentals because it's near a hospital. Uh, we could keep it, but we just felt it just didn't fit in with our plan. Well, and listen, thank you for disclosing all that. I, I know it's very, very helpful to uh, to the viewers. Mm -hmm. um, and did you kiss and make up with your uh, contractor? You're good? Uh, yes. No, well, I'm not sort of. Well, I, I <laughs> okay, I'll let you she guys did. discuss that. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back, and then we'll go through the uh, numbers. We're talking to our friends, uh, Francois and Jennifer, and we're learning how to make money investing in properties remotely. Don't go anywhere. Everyday Investor continues in a moment. At Theta Training, our goal is to help you achieve financial freedom by teaching you the foundations of trading stock options. Join our growing community. Learn through our live streamed weekend course or develop your skills at your own pace online. Understand how the stock market works and how you can use the options market to earn additional income, achieve financial freedom, and live life on your terms. Let us help you build your empire. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. We're talking to Francois and Jennifer, learning how we can make money investing remotely before we get to them and go through the numbers. Let's find out what's happening in the world of mortgages. Thanks, Rob. My name is Kyle from the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team. I'm excited to chat with you guys about some upcoming private lending opportunities. Did you know that you have the ability to participate in private lending opportunities secured on real estate starting at 10%? Yes, 10% that you can lend your money secured on real estate right here in Ontario. In the next upcoming weeks and months, we have several opportunities, including first mortgages secured on quality investment properties right here in Southwest, Southwestern Ontario. Even better than that, not only can you lend cash, many of these opportunities are RRSP or TFSA eligible. That's right, 10% secured on real estate in your TFSA or RRSP. If you have any questions on this stuff, don't hesitate to reach out to myself and the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team. Thanks. Back to you, Rav. Okay, Francois and Jennifer, let's look at some uh, numbers here. Uh, we already have a few of them. So basically, we, um, we are buying this property at $450,000. And um, what did we do for uh, renovations on this one? So basically, we just uh, did a lot of cleaning up because there was lots of garbage and things around. So that and carpeting cost us about eight. 30, 30 total I put there. 30? So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the carpet was eight. Yeah. That's it for cleaning, painting, garbage, carpeting, gravel. Because driveways are all gravel in New Brunswick. <laughs> so. And you said you guys ended up just flipping this property. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Because now we needed to look at the roof and the, the balconies and so on and so forth. So. So we purchased the property May, and um, you uh, are now selling it right now. Yes. And uh, this episode is going to air in a few weeks, but let's call it, uh, we're, what, November, mid-November? Yeah, that's it. So, so we're how, many months, how many months is that? It's five, six? Yeah, about five. Yeah, five almost months. six by the time we're done. Okay, so let's say six months. And then what else do we have? What other expenses here? We have our closing. Uh, we've got, you, did you sell this uh, privately or did you use a traditional real estate? Agent. We, yeah, we used a realtor. So there's the, his commission, 5%. Commi commission. Anything else? Closing costs, commission. So what were the closing costs? Closing costs were about 15,000. There was the appraisal, $3,000 for the bank. The mortgage broker fee, which was almost seven thousand, and five thousand for legal. Okay. Yeah. So you're talking about closing of the purchase. Oh, the and purchase. Of the sale. Yeah, yeah, and the sale. So okay, yeah, I'm including so both. So all your closing costs, fifteen k. Yeah. Before and, and, and after. What do we, and what do we pay out in commissions? 
Commission, uh, it's 5% of 600,000, so, 30, so 35,000. Yeah, 35, 35, 30, yeah. 30? Yeah. 35. Uh, 5 oh, no, 6, 30, sorry. 30, 30 sorry okay. about that. <laughs> Francois, always listen to the lady. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you can always have, I, I always say we can always make sure that as men, we have the last words. Yeah. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay. Here we go. So we are into this property, um, seventy-five thousand uh, dollars, correct? And we bought it for four fifty. Yes. So I know we didn't do it, but pretend we bought it all cash. Uh, this brings us up at uh, five and a quarter. Yep. Right. So we are uh, five and a quarter, and you sold this for what? Six six hundred. And we sold for. 600k so we are profiting $75,000 in 6 months and you got to binge on the new season of Dexter while in the comfort of your own home while you did this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's fantastic. And now you have a system in place that we can just keep doing this. We've got three realtors, we've got a contractor that we uh, made up with perhaps uh, yes. We have a home inspector, and so uh, this is the spot right now. Is there other um, uh, other gems that you can uh, give us, or is this your spot right now, um, New Brunswick? No, we're we're uh, looking at Alberta, Calgary. So there's similar deals happening, and the economy is really booming. Uh, Detroit, Michigan. So I know that's not Canada, but we're really doing well there, and Florida as well. So Orlando, Port Cor Coral area. So, so what are you, um, teach us a little bit of what are you looking at? I mean, Cape Coral, Florida, you know, Detroit, Michigan, or Flint, or whatever the case is, New Brunswick, Alberta. What, what are you looking for? What, like, I mean, you're not just throwing a dart at a map no. and saying, let's invest <laughs> there. What are some of the fundamentals that allow you to know you can make a great return, whether it's the burst strategy, whether it's a flip? Yeah, so I think that the basic fundamentals are, are always what we're kind of looking at, which is obviously the uh, economy. Um, so in Calgary and, and in New Brunswick, we mostly look at multifamily because I think that that's kind of what works the best in those markets. But in the States, that's we're, we're doing something totally different, which is more like single family homes. And then in Florida, obviously, is vacation, vacation rentals. So they're not exactly the same markets, but a lot of the fundamentals are the same in that, in that the economies are all uh, booming. And I think that um, you still have to be careful, though, because I think that, that like uh, an economy like Moncton, uh, New Brunswick, can kind of be more limited. So that's kind of why we stick to the multifamilies in that area. Yeah, the golden rule is always the price. The price is right. <laughs> so you buy at the right price and then look at the market. Is it Does it have a good tenant culture as well that's huge mm -hmm. is this a place where people rent so like in detroit multifamily don't do well it's not culturally good people rent houses there so you adapt to the market florida it's vacationing i that's what i want so mm -hmm. for us it's maybe selfish and cash flow uh, since i i quit my job i'm now a full-time investor uh, jennifer's joining me soon so that's made a big difference and we do need that cash flow to, to oh, live. That's great. That's great. Congratulations. And, and you know, I want uh, uh, the viewers at home to know that this is hard work. I mean, we to, to be able yeah. to do that research, right? Just what you're talking about, to look at, you know, the economy, to look at in migration, are people moving there? Are there jobs created? Is there a supply demand, uh, you know, there? So, um, yeah, we've got to do our homework. We can't just Oh, I got lucky and I made seventy-five thousand in six months. No. And I know you, you're doing multiple deals. This is just one that we happen to be talking to uh, about on the show. So, so that's great. So, um, on the um, five twenty-five, the purchase price, and then all your other fees. Um, obviously, there's a mortgage. On, I'm guessing there's a mortgage. This isn't all cash, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. <laughs> so there's a mortgage on there, and so our, our ROI is is a, a very high number, but it's actually infinite because you used um we we're talking at the break you didn't use any of your own money you had a uh, a private lender uh, on this deal exactly yes and yeah, so he paid so for the down payment and we we supplied the renovations though we financed the renovations but but they um they went on title no no, no it was a separate 
Okay, great. So you borrowed, what was, what was the amount then? 30, 40,000 from the private lender? 125,000. 125,000. Yeah, this was a commercial loan because it's six units. So Got we needed it. a higher cash down for the purchase. Got it. Okay, so the down payment was higher. That's where we came up with the 125. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> we, we borrow. I just want people to see this. So we borrow 125K. And usually when somebody um, borrows money, they're willing to pay 8 to 12%. Yeah. What did you what did you pay on this um, to, to borrow? We paid ten percent interest monthly. Ten percent, so uh, annual, ten, but a monthly payment. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so so ten percent, but it was only a six month deal. So is that really five percent? Um, yeah, I guess that's how you could calculate it. But it's yeah, it's ten percent divided by twelve paid monthly. So it's still so 10%. six seven six or seven thousand dollars. That's it. So exactly. very cheap money for. Okay, so you paid six to seven k. Um, of course, that's going to come out of this. So no, you... it came out of the cash flow actually, the monthly rent. Oh wow! Yeah. So it came out of that. So this seventy five. But even if you, even if it did come out of here, you made sixty eight thousand yeah. in in six months with none of your own money. That's it. Exactly. No, and most of the renovations were re repaid as well through the cash flow during this time so so that's very interesting so did we keep those tenants or did we switch out those tenants they kind of naturally moved out some of them because of changes we made and rules um and then some of them we kept some were good so mm -hmm. and those the ones that left and then when new ones came in you were able to charge a higher rent much exactly. higher yes okay and you know as little old rav is uh, talking to you guys I want to make 10% perhaps. Maybe I don't want to do all the hard work you do. Are yeah. you, are you uh, open to, to Rav and friends uh, investing with you and, and, and lending money at 10%? Absolutely, yeah. That would be a pleasure. That's how we prefer to do deals. And like you said, it's safer for the investor. They get a guaranteed uh, return and then we get the work. <laughs> and, and, and obviously you structure these things differently, right? Yeah. Like may, maybe I might make 11, 12% if I have to go on title or maybe, you know, if, um, Balloon if there's a, payments a or yeah, or if you're, you know, I'm waiting longer because you're going to hold it, but we're refinancing or talk a little bit about education. I always say to people, you know, education mitigates risk, education, uh, breeds confidence. I know you along with Sarah and a couple of others, you're you're part of the, the right club, R-E-I-T-E. -E. What does that stand for, by the way, again? Real Estate Investment Training and Education Club. Okay. And so you guys teach people um, out of that club. But what about yourselves? I, um, I'm sure you're also mentored or having some um, network mentoring. I mean, how does, how does that work for you in terms of learning? I want people to be inspired that, hey, you know, um, it's more than just reading a book uh, uh, once in a while. Uh, you, you do need to be, you, you can coach, but you also need to be coached, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So now I, I coach people, but Jennifer and I, we join, join some mentoring programs as well. And every, I find every year you need to upgrade your coaching and improve your mindset and, and growth as well. Because this seemed really big to us a few, like a month, uh, sorry, a year ago. But now this seems like a very small deal, like only half a million. But not long ago, half a million was a really big deal for <laughs> us. So, yeah, no, that's uh, that's fantastic. Listen, uh, I'm I'm uh, inspired. I know those that are watching are to be able to do this uh, remotely in Canada. Um, you know, it's uh, it's fantastic sight unseen and make a cool, you know, seventy five thousand dollars in six months without your own money. So. Francois yeah. and Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Yes, and thank you guys at home for watching. Without you, we would not have a show. Make sure you tune in next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Bye, everyone.